Ya, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. For today, I'm going to continue with the, the lecture on uh, the next topic. I think the last time I covered the topic of uh, powers of the public prosecutor, I think. Yes, uh, so the next topic will be on, uh, I'm going to talk about the first, there are two topics today. The first one, two topics, they're quite short actually. The first one is on initiation of proceedings. And then uh, after that, I'm going to talk about impeachment procedures, inshallah. So I begin with initiation of proceedings. First of all, uh, uh, be aware of the difference between uh, initiation of proceedings and institution of proceedings. Institution of proceedings is where the proceeding begins in the in, 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 in the court, the magistrate court. Initiation of proceedings is actually uh, upon the complaint made to a magistrate. So the azan is going on, so I'm going to stop for a while here until the, 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 the azan is over. So I'm not going to put out the, the video, I'm just a, a short break. Okay, we continue. Okay, we continue with the topic of uh, initiation of proceedings as I mentioned. Uh, differentiate initiation of proceedings from institution of proceedings, institution of proceedings as we discussed before, how a case started at the magistrate court, starting from a report to the police, investigation by the police, and then powers of the public prosecutor and a charge, a person being brought to court, a charge be read out and all. But initiation of proceeding is upon the complaint directly made to the magistrate. 
So this is provided for in section 128 of the CPC. Section 128 uh, mentioned about cognizant, cognizant by the magistrate. What is cognizant by the magistrate? When the complaint has been made to a magistrate, a magistrate takes cognizant of the case. The magistrate takes cognizant of the case, cognizant from, you know, the word recognize, recognize, cognizant. When the magistrate takes cognizance of the case upon the complaint made directly to him under Section 128. So what is what is a complaint? Or uh, which complaint that the magistrate can take cognizance of? Section 128 provides for under A, 1281A, a complaint, receiving a complaint as defined under this code. Upon his own knowledge or suspicion that an offence has been committed, can take cognizance of the case upon his own suspicion, knowledge or suspicion. Whenever it, whenever it appears to the public prosecutor that an offence has been committed and he, by warrant under his hand, requires magistrate to inquire into the offence and make magistrate receive a order. So where the PP requires a magistrate to inquire into an offence, and D on any person being brought before him in custody with the process accused of having committed an offence which the magistrate has jurisdiction you know, decision to try. A person being brought before the magistrate on suspicion of having committed an offence. So the magistrate can take condition of the of the case. And then 1282, when the magistrate takes condition of an offence under clause B. The accused or when there are several persons accused, any one of them shall be entitled to require that the case shall not be tried by that magistrate, but they should tried by another magistrate. So this is a situation between taking commission and trying the case. There are two different things. We'll talk about that later. I'm going to talk about that later. Between uh, making inquiry, taking commission and making inquiry and actually trying the case are two different things. Okay, maybe perhaps you cannot picture in your mind how a situation like 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 such as under section one to eight one can arise. So, kadai macam mana boleh timbul complaint direct kepada magistrate ni? Satunya, uh, firstly the case usually are uh, non sensible cases. Sensible cases, lalunya kalau ada report terus dibuat kepada di balai polis, polis akan terus buat takapan dan sebagainya. But these are usually non-sensible cases where people lodge, uh, uh, make a complaint direct to the magistrate. So, who? Contoh-contoh case, under what circumstances? Kalau you tengok case yang di referred to, di referred to in uh, your textbook tu. For example, at page uh, 3 to 7, at page 3 to 7, there's a case, uh, uh, Reza Kiamme against PP, 2013 AMR. Reza Kiamme is actually a complaint made by Suruhanjaya, Suruhanjaya Pengangkutan Awang Darat, SPAD. So, when the case is uh, criminal in nature, but... Uh, investigation or the power to the power to enforce the laws uh, under enforcement agency for example SPAT dalam case ni SPAT or SOCSO or EPF EPF cases for example where a person an employer has not been uh, grant, has not been making contribution on behalf of his employee into the uh, EPF into the employee, employer's provident fund so the enforcement agency can make a complaint to the magistrate <coughs> and the magistrate can call upon the case for inquiry, take condition of the case and call upon the inquiry, take the next step which, which we are going to discuss. So there will also may be cases where a report been made to the police but the case is of a trivial nature. It is a criminal offence but of trivial nature. For example, like jiran bergaduh dengan jiran and kind of thing lah. and in uh, in the past there's also been cases where uh, gaduh between husband and wife 
husband and wife gaduh so so the people who usually lodge a complaint under 128 it can be private person individuals can be enforcement agencies can also be companies so <coughs> What do the, what what do a magistrate do on receiving receiving a complaint? On, upon receiving the complaint, the magistrate will take condition of the case and will go to the next step, which is uh, section one three three. Section one three three, and of course uh, you can also you have you 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 can read yourself section one to nine. Where under certain under certain uh, cases, certain type of cases, requires uh, sanction from the public prosecutor. We will be talk about before the before a complaint can be made to the magistrate. And then the section one three zero. Where the the public prosecutor or some of the officer empowered by him uh, make the complaint to the magistrate, and one three one where complaint by person agreed, complaint by some person agreed by the offence or by the public prosecutor, and one three two where complaint by husband, no court shall take condition of offence as such of one except upon the complaint made by the husband or woman. So you can see the type of cases, like lunar cases, uh, domestic dispute, cases uh, enforcement agency where the PP requires uh, a complaint to be made to the magistrate, and also there, there are also some cases where people have lodged a, uh, to, uh, lodged a complaint to the police report, uh, to the police in the form of a police report, but because of the trivial nature of the case, the police did not take any action but instead refer the case to the magistrate. The term used is RTN, refer to magistrate. So the police or other enforcement agency refer the case to the magistrate for the magistrate to take action, take cognition and on the complaint and take the next action and the next action is section 133 section 133 is about examination of the complaint and the first thing the, the the magistrate will do is actually set a date we can see 1331a set a date serve a notice seven clear days before the date of examination on the, of the complainant such notice shall specify the date of examination of the particulars of the complaint received by the magistrate serve it on the public prosecutor and examine the complainant upon oath and the substance of examination of complainant shall be reduced to writing and shall be signed by the complainant and the magistrate and the public prosecutor may appear as a magistrate in the examination of the complainant. But the public prosecutor also has got the power to actually to uh, at any stage of examination direct the police to investigate the offence complained of and no report thereon to the, the public prosecutor and to report thereon to the public prosecutor. The public prosecutor may direct police to investigate the offence complained of the magistrate shall not proceed with examination and complainant. This section has not applied complete offence where someone's applied for someone's case may police officer, public officer, public servant acting in this official capacity. So what it means here, bila ada satu complaint, the magistrate took condition of the complaint and then uh, conduct inquiry. The conduct inquiry is what I refer to as the examination of the complainant. I examine the complainant. And during the examination of the complainant, he has to be under oath, he has to be taken down in writing, and he has to be signed by the complainant and the magistrate. But if during the examination, the public prosecutor decide to investigate, to direct the police to investigate the offence, then the magistrate will just stop the inquiry and the case will be taken over by the police and the public prosecutor. So, let's look at some of the cases. <coughs> uh, 
ini apa yang apa yang saya terangkan tadi apalah satu proses yang selalunya dari segi bahasa biasa ni disebut sebagai inquiry by the magistrate where the case complain lead to the magistrate magistrate may inquiry so dalam inquiry ni of course the public prosecutor may appear assist the magistrate the examination of the complainant and ini menjadikan ianya tidak tidak banyak beza daripada inquiry-inquiry yang lain yang kita pernah dengar the Royal Commission of Inquiry dan sebagainya yang selalunya conducted by a suruhan jaya but here is a magistrate conducting inquiry upon the complainant upon the complaint made to him ok when do the magistrate decide to make this inquiry when to examine the complainant uh, as stated at page 3 to 9 of the textbook there are few cases being referred to here Ma Chuan Lim PP against Ma Chuan Lim the magistrate granted an application for medical treatment by the accused counsel when after the accused counsel complained that the accused was assaulted by the police nah, ini satu lagi keadaan yang mana selalu berlaku keadaan yang mana selalu complain be made direct to the magistrate kalau dia mengata mengadu bahawa he has been assaulted semasa berada di dalam police custody so dalam kes ni uh, the complaint was made through dia punya counsel lah so so ada dua kes yang berlatar belakang kan macam tu dalam kes Ma Chuan Lim dan juga Tan Ho Wat dalam Ma Chuan Lim dan Tan Ho Wat ni dua-dua keadaan dia sama actually where a person alleged that they have been assaulted while they are in police custody and they make complaints to the magistrate so the magistrate can actually conduct inquiry about examining the complainant as per by law call under section 133 so what are the issues here dalam case Ma Chuan Lim the magistrate granted the application for an order for medical treatment after the accused counsel complained that the accused was assaulted by the police and then Justice Sai Osman called for the case for revision called the case for revision and said that for the order to be valid the magistrate must first inquiry, inquire into the alleged offence of assault upon complaint under oath by this case there was no such complaint so apa yang berlaku dalam case Ma Chuan Li ni ada complaint mengatakan bahawa dia be assaulted by the police what the magistrate do is that direct for the accused, uh, for the, uh, accused to be referred for medical examination so upon revision when the when the judge call up the high court judge call up the case for revision he said that this is wrong the first thing that the court should do the magistrate should do is conduct an inquiry ataupun uh, examine the complainant what should have been done is actually upon examine the complainant under oath follow 133 seperti mana provider 4 under 133 uh, complain under oath take it into writing and reduce it into writing sign by the complainant and all that should have been done and not just refer for medical examination dalam Tan Ho Wat held that the magistrate takes condition of the offence when he has the intention to initiate the judicial proceedings against the offender not when he is informed by the complainant or the police report the magistrate is not bound to examine the complainant until he has taken condition of the offence so apa yang dimasukkan di sini when there is a complaint and the magistrate intended to initiate judicial proceedings against the offender <coughs> complaint being assaulted by someone and the intention is to take action or judicial proceeding judicial action against the person complains against complaints of <coughs> so then only the magistrate will actually take cognizant of the offence conduct uh, con, uh, examine the complainant and all with the intention to initiate judicial proceedings against the offender and not when it's informed by the complainant or the police report not just because they're informed but because he wants to initiate a judicial uh, uh, judicial judicial proceedings so in other words the magistrate is not bound to examine the complainant until he has taken condition of the offence so other offence 
take cognizant there is actually an offence, then only you will actually uh, examine the complaint. Rasia Munusami. Re Rasia Munusami magistrate issued a warrant of arrest merely based on the strength of the complainant's complaint and the first information report. Only that. Based on the strength of the complainant's complainant's complaint and the first information report, Trus issued a warrant of arrest. So, Edgar Joseph, Justice Edgar Joseph Jr. said that the very first thing the magistrate must do upon the receipt of a complaint under Section 133, which includes a complaint under Section 132, is at once to examine the complainant upon oath. Examine the complainant upon oath. And reduce the substance of examination into writing, which shall be signed by the magistrate and the complainant. It follows, therefore, that merely to call the complainant to attest the complaint upon oath is not sufficient, nor would be sufficient to follow up this with an unrecorded and unsworn interview. The requirements given are mandatory, above are mandatory. Their object being to enable the magistrate to decide on the veracity of the complaint, for upon that will depend his decision as to whether or not a protest or process should issue. Proses itu mana keluar ke warna tangkap dan sebagainya. So, the provision under Section 133, 133 that requires the complaint be made under oath, reduce to writing, sign, are all mandatory. It's not just hearing the complaint, interview him, and issue warna no arrest. Because the magistrate has to make a decision based on the recorded, the recorded is not is not evidence recorded statement or recorded examination of the complainant. Then he has to make a decision whether to issue a process or not, or an arrest and all. So why all this examination? What is the object, the objective of it? The object of examination is to ascertain facts to separate unfounded from substantial cases to prevent innocent persons being put in police custody and to help the magistrate to judge whether there are grounds for investigation as well as proceeding with the case. So, lagi sekali, kes Rasia Murusami, Edgar Joseph Jr. held that the examination is only a preliminary inquiry and not to inquire into the case for the defence. The person complained against is not the accused. Thus, the magistrate should not convert the inquiry into a trial before a trial. The High Court in Teo Teo Chong Si against Nance held that the inquiry is limited to examine the truth of the complaint and not to conclude it as a case of the defense. So, the inquiry is actually just to ascertain the complaint to be substantial cases complain being the complain is is not groundless is not without a crown you can imagine the situation it's not a case of simply siapa-siapa saja boleh pergi dekat magistrate simply making a complain lepas tu magistrate issue orang tangkap terhadap orang itu perlu be determined dulu sama ada that complain ada ground ataupun tidak that's the first thing. And the purpose is actually to make a preliminary inquiry as the truth of the complaint and not not to try the case. It's not a trial yet. It's just an inquiry, a preliminary inquiry. And uh, to ascertain the facts, whether the complaint has got grounds. Two objective their examination. It's not a trial. It's bukan satu perbicaraan. It's just inquiry to ascertain that the complaints is with or without grounds. <coughs> okay. Uh, seterusnya, Session 134, Postponement of Issue of Process. In a magistrate sees reason to doubt the truth of the complaint. Uh, Section 134, Kalau dia doubt the truth of the complaint of an offence, of which is authorized to take permission, he may, when the complainant has been examined, record his reason for doubting the truth of the complaint 
A may then postpone the issue of process for company attendance or the person complained against and either inquire into the case himself or direct some police officer to make inquiries for the purpose of ascertaining the truth or falsehood of the complaint and report to him and to the public prosecutor the result of those inquiries. If the magistrate decides to inquire into the case himself with the following subsection 1, the magistrate shall serve on the public prosecutor a notice in writing or at least seven clear days before the inquiry and public prosecutor may appear and assist the magistrate in such inquiry. Ini apa yang saya sebut tadi lah. The magistrate dia doubt the truth of the complaint may then postpone the issue of process for compelling the attenders or the person complained against and either inquire into the case himself or direct the police for the inquiry. Setelah mendengar buat examination after conducting the examination after the inquiry, the, the magistrate has got doubt as to the truth of the complaint. So he can direct for further inquiries either by the police or he himself and also shall serve a notice on the public prosecutor saying that he wants further inquiry on this. Dia boleh postpone the issue of process. Bukan postpone mengeluarkan warrant tangkap dan sebagainya terhadap orang yang kepada terhadapnya telah diadukan. I hope you understand lah. So, bukan immediately issue issue, issue process meaning that keluarkan warrant of arrest dan sebagainya tetapi conduct further inquiry <coughs> and under one under one three five dia boleh dismiss the complaint the magistrate before whom a complaint is made by may dismiss the complaint if after examining the complainant and recording his examination and considering the result of the inquiry if any under section 134 there is in the judgment no sufficient ground for proceeding so kalau no sufficient ground for proceeding just dismiss the complaint okay those are situations of when the magistrate conduct an examination when making inquiry conduct an examination of the complainant after taking cognition of the offense of an offense upon upon complaint to him under section 1 to 8. So, proceedings before magistrate, section 136, commencement of proceeding before magistrate for issue of process. So, tadi dia dismiss. So, sekarang ni dia tak dismiss. the issue process. If in the opinion of the magistrate taking condition on the offence, there is sufficient ground for proceeding. Tadi no sufficient ground for proceeding. Sekarang ni ada sufficient ground for proceeding and the case appears to be one which according to the fourth column of the first schedule, summons should be issued in the first place. He shall issue a summons for the attendance of the accused. If the case appears to be one which according to the column, a warrant should be issued in the first place, he may issue a warrant if he thinks fit a summons for causing the accused to be brought before him for a certain time before himself or some magistrate having jurisdiction. So, selepas mendengar buat inquiry, selepas mendengar examining, examining the complaint, complaint yang bukan buat inquiry, buat inquiry is examining, examining the complainant. No sufficient ground, dia boleh dismiss. Kalau ada sufficient ground for proceeding, he will issue sama ada summons, kalau it's a summons case, or warrant if it's an arrest case. Warrant of arrest or a summons case. Kalau issue warrants, that means the person will be detained in custody pending the, ataupun be released on bail lah, pending the, 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 the date of the hearing of the inquiry. 137, whenever magistrate issues a summons, he may at his discretion by endorsement thereon or for note therefore dispense subject to such provision as he may defeat to impose with dispense with the personal attendance of the accused and permit him to appear by an advocate. So, some color dalam case summons, some other the accused himself appear or he can also send an advocate if the court permits this to be so. Any case relating to offence punishable by fine only or by punishment only a term of not exceeding three months by both fine magistrate not exceeding three months and which magistrate should summons a accused person using to plead guilty be convicted and sentenced absent may appear by okay or may letter address to magistrate plead guilty 
and submit to pay any fine which may be imposed and respect of the offense and the legislative minimum report people think only according the law and may sentence the fine blah 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 this is a plea of guilty by way of not personally attending in court <coughs> tapi melalui counsel saja ataupun by letter mengaku salah by letter dalam case yang fine only atau imprisonment not more than 3 months selalunya untuk untuk fine kan? in the case of plea guilty by letter the accused shall give in the letter and repeat postal address the magistrate shall inform the accused by letter sent by the dispose ini semua dia punya administrative perkara-perkara prosedur lah any fine imposed shall be paid the magistrate within 7 days fine is bayar within 7 days Magistrate inquiring or into trying the case may in discretion is say for direct the personal attendance of the accused tapi pada bila-bila masa pun boleh direct for personal attendance Sentence of prisonment without option of fine shall not be pronounced in the absence of the accused by the magistrate with intent to pass the sentence shall direct and enforce the personal attendance of the accused upon the session 4 Apa maksud di sini? Kalau magistrate tu ingin menjatuhkan hukuman penjara bukan fine sahaja tapi ada penjara then dia akan menggunakan section subsection 4 ini untuk direct the personal attendance of the accused <coughs> upon the accused appearing as before seen the magistrate shall if the accused who desires to, to withdraw his plea of guilty a claim trial notwithstanding any other such omission may in his absence permit the accused to withdraw such plea and so on meaning that dia boleh withdraw dia punya plea upon attendance so so that's adalah satu gambaran proses dia boleh conduct trial boleh plead guilty by letter or kalau nak jatuh impose sentence of imprisonment require his personal attendance kalau dia nak plead guilty lah ataupun buat melalui dan sebagainya so apa isu-isu yang selalu berbangkit dalam kes-kes ni so isu yang berbangkit Kita boleh tengok kes Datuk Seri Sama Value dengan S. Nada Raja ni. The issues that were raised in the High Court involve questions of constitutional law with regards to the provisions of Section 133-136. Kalau kita tengok 133-136 ni, dia bagi kuasa kepada magistrate untuk terima komplain, buat inquiry, uh, jatuh hukuman dan sebagainya. So, there are a few issues by this here. Yang pertama sekali adalah First issue raise Supercial Country Formula in Article 145 Masalah yang pertama adalah Article 1453 of the Federal Constitution The learner high court judge held that the magistrate any doubt as to the truth of the complaint of offence He can either make inquiry into the case himself Or direct some police officer to make inquiries for the purpose of receiving the truth or falsehood of the complaint And the police officer is to report to him such result of query Ini kita dah beritahu dah discuss tadi Thus it is apparent Thus, the apparent from section 128, section 133 to 136 that the actions of the magistrate at this stage of are investigatory or preliminary in nature. Nampak tak? Sure. Yeah. Apa yang di provide for under section 128 tadi? Terima complaint. Take commission. Make inquiries. For the purpose of assigning the true the falsehood of the complaint. And direct the police officer to report to him the result of such inquiries. All these are actually investigatory or preliminary in nature. The session refers to magistrate, not the magistrate court. Dia bukan kuasa mahkamah, tapi kuasa magistrate itu sendiri. This distinction become clear as section 173 CBC is in the magistrate court on the trial. So language article 145 refers to any proceeding, blah, 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 blah. So, isu dia berkaitan dengan artikel 1453 lah. 1453 ni apa dia? Kuasa pendakwa raya. So, adakah melanggar artikel 1453 sini? Tapi mahkamah telah memutuskan bahawa tidak. Tidak melanggar di sini because section the language of artikel 1453 Federal Constitution refers to any proceeding for an offence other than before a Sharia court, a native court, a court martial. 
search article 145 is no application to section 133 to 136 sebab ada kecuk the language tu ada mengeluarkan beberapa jenis kesalahan so so ada beberapa keadaan yang mana dah terkeluar daripada dikecualikan daripada artikel 145 kuasa pendakwa raya which is to actually uh, the discretion to institute conduct or discontinue any proceedings tu so dia ada ini adalah salah satu daripada keadaan yang mana terkeluar daripada it was like there's no terkeluar there's no application 1133 to 166 is uh, article 145 has got no application to it so dia dikecualikan daripada article 145 sama macam syariah court, native court, court martial dan sebagainya ok second issue raise of either 133 to 136 of the CPC placing an executive function upon the magistrate breaches article 39 article 121 of the federal constitution which assign executive powers to the executive and judicial powers to the judiciary So, magistrate, judiciary, judiciary ada function dia tersendiri and of course berbeza daripada legislative and the executive, you know, a government of the three branches of the government, the legislative, judiciary, the judiciary and the executive, <coughs> so whether this, in, this powers <coughs> given to the magistrate actually uh, infringe <coughs> goes into the powers of the executive executive branch of the government so apa court kata the learner high court judge held that the CPC is a pre-medical law that section 133 and 136 cannot be declared void article 1626 requires a court to apply the law with such modification as necessary to bring it into court with the constitution and section 133 136 are not inconsistent with article 39 or 121 of federal constitution apa maksud dia di sini CPC ni sebelum merdeka dah wujud dia seperti merdeka law dan section 162 mengatakan bahawa section di uh, pre merdeka law are not bukan terbatal bukan bila ada je constitution mana semua undang-undang sebelum merdeka terbatal no it does not mean that but ada section 132 require memerlukan supaya undang-undang yang sebelum merdeka ini di apply kan with such modification diaplikasikan dengan modification as is necessary to bring it into accord with the constitution perlu dilaksanakan dengan perubahan-perubahan yang membawa dia kepada selaras dengan perlembagaan so dia bukan terbatal dengan sendiri tapi mahkamah perlu apply kan supaya dia selaras dengan perlembagaan so itulah yang dilakukan oleh mahkamah kita tengok dalam kes biasa terpakai siasatan oleh pihak polis dan sebagainya dan pendawaan oleh pendawaan dan sebagainya tetapi dalam kes-kes tertentu boleh dibuat juga komplain kepada magistrat seperti mana yang telah saya sebut awal tadi lah enforcement agency kes uh, private uh, private summons uh, cases where people complain against the authority direct to the magistrat so boleh dipakai lagi provision ini walaupun dia pre merdeka tapi masih lagi boleh dipakai dalam keadaan kita sekarang ni The third issue is whether section 133 to 136 which contains provisions to comment proceedings without investigation and without attendance of the accused to be heard before such comment must be valid and void being contrary to article 5 and article 8. So dalam kes ni, semasa magistrate membuat inquiry, examine the complainant, it was made without the attendance of the, of the accused person, of the person complains again. So sama ada ini melanggar hak-hak asasi di bawah artikel 5 dan juga di bawah artikel 8. So the learner high court judge held that it was decided on a matter raised for article 5 in that the procedure set out section 133, 136 was a continuing law. Thus the issue of process of application is accorded with law. As for article 8, complaints 
of non-suitable offence being committed by a person proceeded under Section 123, CPC does all person alleged to have committed non-suitable offence are equal and equally protected before the law. Apa maksud dia di sini? Pertama tadi, dalam Artikel 5 ada safe with accordance with the law. Maknanya, certain-certain uh, hak itu boleh di, bukan di infringe langgar tidak boleh dilanggar melainkan ada undang-undang yang memperuntukkannya. So CPC adalah undang-undang yang memperuntukkan boleh dibuat demikian because CPC is also law. Isu of Article 8 uh, yang berkaitan dengan all person equal before the law entitled to equal protection of the law. So semua proses ni ada all complaints of a non-seasonable offence being committed by a person who proceeded under section 133166 the process biasa di bawah all non-seasonable offence sama macam all other non-seasonable offence so dia equal lah So basically, uh, basically itulah isu-isu yang ada di bawah initiation of proceedings ni where the magistrate take commission after complain directly to him or complain di bawah session 128 tadi sama ada complain he from his own knowledge or whether uh, public prosecutor refer to him apa lagi tadi orang tu eh magistrate complain receive a complain magistrate no, sorry. magistrate receiving a complain from his from his own knowledge public prosecutor by warrant requires the magistrate to make inquiry into an offence or person be brought be brought before him in custody so bila ada complain semacam ini to the magistrate then the magistrate will actually conduct an examination or make inquiry and then will decide whether to issue warrant of arrest or summons against so or complain again and of course before that the magistrate will have to actually make a decision whether the complaint is uh, with grounds or the substance or without substance whether, they may, uh, whether to dismiss or actually to issue process by issuing warrants as summons and sebagainya and also the powers of the magistrate to actually find the person guilty under that law which he was actually the complaint was made against so case-case macam mana yang selalu berlaku macam saya katakan tadi private summons uh, complain against authority kalau seorang itu mengatakan dia kena pukul dalam tahanan selalu berlaku macam ni ataupun where uh, enforcement agencies enforcement agencies macam uh, SPAD, EPF dan sebagainya when an offence against uh, the law which the enforcement agency was enforcing or in some matters which the police declined to investigate because of its trivial nature dan sebagainya Okay, there are still this there are still this type of cases where the proceeding can go under one to eight and one three three one three six menanya. So, so later if you practice as a lawyer as a defense counsel dan sebagainya and your client comes to you with certain type of cases seperti mana yang yang boleh diambil action seperti ini then you have to take the action as in these cases lah for example seorang one of your client complain or make a complaint to you mengadu kepada semasa dia di dalam tahanan dia telah dipukul so what do you do bila dapat macam tu so you make a complaint as in section 1 to 8 to the magistrate for the magistrate to conduct an examination dan sebagainya Okay, itu saja on the topic of initiation of proceedings. So, any questions you can, seperti biasa, you can uh, WhatsApp me directly or contact me right directly. And I'm going to move on to the next topic now, which is impeachment. So, impeachment, impeachment proceedings... Uh, 
we have touched on this before we have touched on impeachment proceedings so and i suggest you can read chapter 10 in your textbook chapter 10 in your textbook which is not that very long just a few pages so what i'm going to do now is to give you an overview and guide you as to dalam keadaan macam mana impeachment ini selalu terpakai impeachment proceeding so what is impeachment proceeding i think you already know saya bagi satu contoh lah. let's say you are a dpp you are a deputy public prosecutor you are conducting a prosecution a trial in court a person has been charged an accused has been charged based on the evidence collected by the police during investigation you ingat lagi dulu taking down of statements dan sebagainya taking down of statement witnesses lalu ni dia bawa section 112 dia bawa section 112 police will record statements from witnesses and then when the DPP decide to bring the case to the court will decide to bring the case to the court sorry for that I'm just trying to I'm just trying to uh, subdue some noises here so uh, where was I just now so when there is when there is uh, when when there is when 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 you decide to conduct proceeding in court when you decide to charge based on the evidence collected by the police and the evidence uh, are also in the form of statements recorded from witnesses under section 112 so when you conduct the trial you call that witness to give evidence and then you question him based on what he said in his statement in 112 based on what he says they don't want to you question him and he is expected to give an answer during trial as in the statement under session 112 because that answer will be recorded by the court to become evidence okay and then suddenly he turned hostile he turned hostile meaning that he did not give the answer as you expected he did not give the answer as in his statement under session 112 which was recorded by the police tetapi, tetapi he gave a different answer in court so what is going to be the effect of that is going to spoil your case you do not have the evidence contoh macam ini lah take a simple case dia mengatakan bahawa dia nampak tertuduh mencuri kereta for example that's what he said the witness says, saya nampak tertuduh telah mencuri sebuah kereta. A simple example. He said that in his statement 112 which was recorded by the police. So during trial, you question him, apa yang awak nampak pada masa itu? So you expect him to give an answer the same as in dia punya statement 112. Saya nampak tertuduh mencuri kereta itu. Because that is the evidence you want to present to court to be recorded by the court because the court will make a decision based on that evidence which is said which is given under examination in chief under oath but suddenly he gave a different answer let's say answer he saw somebody else not the accused person say nampak seorang yang bernama so and so mengambil kereta itu bukan tertuduh which is a different totally entire different piece of evidence and based on what he said in court there's no way that the accused person can be convicted because the evidence now says that another person not an accused commits the offense so what can you do under that situation you cannot leave that evidence as it is in the court's record because you can never get a conviction because it will create a contradiction with the other witnesses so you nampak tak gambaran dia so what can you do under that situation and you go for impeachment so where do impeachment what is the purpose of this impeachment to challenge the credibility of witness western hostile 
challenge credibility dia, keboleh percayaan dia sebab dia telah memberi keterangan yang bertentangan, dia yang stern hostile, bertentangan dengan apa yang dikatakan sebelumnya. He's no longer your witness in that sense. So, you want to expunge that part of the evidence. You want to challenge the police credibility. So, that is section 145 of the Evidence Act. You apply to cross-examine the Cross examine your own witness. Generally, you cannot cross examine your own witness, but you have to. You can do so under Section 145 with the permission of the court. So, lepas di cross examine, they still maintain answer dia macam tu. Answer dia mengatakan oh bukan tertuduh yang mengambil kereta itu. Then you have to apply Section 155, Section 155 of the Evidence Act, which is impeaching the credit of witnesses. There are three situations you can impeach when the person has become unworthy of credit maknanya dia tidak boleh dipercayai seperti mana yang saya tunjukkan contoh tadi lah ataupun you have evidence that has been bright ataupun nombor tiga formal statements inconsistent with any part of this evidence which is liable to be contradicted so this is the this is the provision yang apply dalam situasi yang saya sebut tadi dia ada formal statement which is our one two statement tetapi formal statement dia tu kandungannya, the content of it dah tak sama dengan apa yang dia beri uh, sebagai keterangan di dalam mahkamah dia dalam keterangan dia di mahkamah dia menceritakan selain daripada apa yang telah diberitahu dalam dia punya statement kepada pihak polis dalam pernyataan dia kepada pihak polis section 112 so I hope you can see the difference So, what do you do? You impeach the penny credit, you apply to court. So, what's the process? So, this this process pun ada di rujuk record 2 in section 113. Remember dulu section 113? Section 113, saya ulang lagi sekali apa yang saya dah cakap dulu. Except as provided in this section, no statement made by any person to a police officer, the cause of police investigation made under this chapter shall be used in evidence. Maknanya, apa-apa statement yang made by a police officer made to a police officer that include that one one two statement lah cannot be used in evidence you cannot produce that statement to be evidence it's hearsay you have to call the witness and the witness has to inform directly give oral evidence in court not just ambil statement dia kemukakan kepada mahkamah unless under certain situation lah section 32 evidence act for, for example bila orang tu tak dapat dikesan So, I hope you can see the difference between the statement, the recorded statement, that piece of paper yang mengandungi rakaman percakapan dia. Beza dia dengan statement dia di mahkamah. Statement di mahkamah, apa yang dia beritahu ke mahkamah secara oral, orally inform the court. Now, that statement, pernyataan yang dirakamkan under section 112 yang kita cerita sebelum tu, generally under section 1131 is not admissible as evidence, meaning that you cannot put that statement, that physical statement to as evidence in court because the evidence in court is apa yang dikatakan orally so dia akan datang mahkamah beri keterangan tapi apa yang beri itu adalah berdasarkan kepada statement dia lah so apabila statement dia dahulu lain dengan apa yang dia beri di mahkamah ni then 1132 will come into play when any witness is called for the prosecution or for the defense dulu prosecution defense boleh impeach lah Other than the accused, other than the accused, meaning the accused person cannot be impeached based on the punya formal statement. Other than the accused, the court shall on the request of the accused or the prosecutor. So the first thing, you have to make a request to court. Bayangkan situasi yang saya sebut tadi, you are the DPP conducting the prosecution. So that witness has actually gave a different story to court, different evidence to court different from what he has stated in his formal statement which is dia punya 112 statement 112 statement tu not admissible tapi here exceptional the court shall on request of the accused of the prosecutor you are the prosecutor here make request the court refer to any statement made by that witness to a police officer the cause of police investigation on this chapter atas permohonan by prosecutor or defense baru mahkamah boleh refer kepada pernyataan terdahulu yang dibuat kepada pihak polis orang untuk statement lah tu yang direkodet tu so under this circumstances ni sahaja baru mahkamah belum awal tadi it's not evident but here or request the court can refer to any statement made by the police 
made by the that we know the police officer cause police investigation. That's what I want to state. Me. Then the court refer on the application, the court refer, and if the court thinks fit in the interest of justice, direct the accused to be furnished with a copy of it, and the statement may be used to impeach the credit of the witness in the manner provided for in the evidence act. So number that refer to the statement refer statement yang dibuat refer statement tu mana statement refer statement lah pernyataan 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 fizikal yang mengandungi rakaman percakapan tutur tutur saksi tu refer that statement kepada majistret nah or to the court beritahu mahkamah yang arif I intend I'm making application to impeach the statement of this witness and uh, I am applying to refer a, the statement made to a police officer which is a one-on-one -on statement to the court. So, akan dirujuk kepada mahkamah, mahkamah will go through it and mahkamah will decide will decide to furnish direct the accused to be given a copy. Decide satu salinan diberi kepada tertuduh. And and the statement may be used to impeach the credit of witnesses. Mana statement itu, statement physical itu boleh digunakan untuk impeach. The court will decide that way after the court has seen the contents of that statement is different from what he has told the court. Di sini, dalam mahkamah dia beritahu, oh saya nampak seorang lain bernama so and so telah mengambil kereta itu. Tapi dalam statement dia, dia kata saya nampak tertuduh yang mengambil statement itu. So ada perbezaan di situ. So we we'll discuss about that. So menampak perbezaan itu, then the court will, will allow for the person to be impeached under the evidence act. Okay. So then the impeachment procedure akan bermula lah, which kita akan cerita sebelum ini. Apa itu impeachment procedure? So the case that you all kena very familiar with dalam impeachment procedure ni, of course, the case of Motosami against PP. The case of Motosami against PP uh, The case of Motosami against PP Which is at page 337 of your Page 337 of your Textbook Kusami against PP 1948 MLJ. This is a landmark case which all subsequent cases has followed as to the procedures on how an impeachment is to be conducted in court. Even, even the provision of section 1132, the amendment to section 113, 113 was made uh, Following the decision in the case of Motosami, it was amended. The, the amendment was uh, made for the procedures there is actually following what has been stated in the decision of the case of Motosami. So I'm going to take a break, uh, sketchup for now, and I will continue with the impeachment. Okay, after this, I'll just take a short break. Okay, we'll see you later shortly.